go, go, Joe. Go, go, Joe. Go, go, Joe. Go, go, Joe. Oh, 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 oh! My god, hey. You get it? You see what I did? <clears throat> Oh my god, hey! Welcome back to my kingdom of stagey isolation. If you're seeing my face for the first time, my name is Mickey Joe, and I am obsessed with all things theatre. Now, if the title of this video, and the thumbnail of this video, and the fact that my head is already in my hands hadn't given you enough of an indication, this one may be controversial. A lot of people have been commenting, asking me my thoughts on Joseph at the Palladium, asking me to go see the production. Spoiler alert, I had already seen it. And I've been sort of wrestling with whether or not I wanted to make this video because I really like uplifting shows, recommending shows, telling you I saw this, it was really great, I went to see this, I loved it, it's amazing. Go buy tickets, go support the industry, especially at a time like this where everything needs support. So before I really get into this one, I want to do a whole disclaimer. First of all, I have seen so many reactions from people about this show that they really loved it. My thoughts on this are absolutely not universal. Theatre is incredibly subjective. Secondly, this is not me attacking Andrew Lloyd Webber. I actually love Andrew Lloyd Webber shows. I am a huge, huge fan of Cats, as we know. I love Evita. I was in a production of Jesus Christ Superstar. I love Phantom, and I love Joseph. I don't think I would have hated this production if I didn't love Joseph so much. I think a lot of my issues with this came from my own sense of nostalgia. And I've seen Joseph on tour at least four times. It's probably one of the first shows I was ever taken to as like a newborn infant. Thirdly, I'm a huge fan of everyone involved in this production, the cast and the creative team. I think Jack Yarrow is a phenomenal talent. Jason Donovan, I loved him in Priscilla. I think he's great. Alexandra Burke, love her as a vocalist. Her discography has gotten me through many a half marathon. The stars were all aligning for this to be a really amazing theatrical experience. And then I hated it. It's worth saying that this negative theatrical experience may have been contributed to by the audience environment. At this point, this was my first show back and a full capacity audience. It was one of the first nights that this was legally possible. This was in the days before Come From Away's first preview. In the shows before and since, I have not seen worse mask etiquette than in this audience. And admittedly, you are not obliged to wear a mask at the theatre. The front of house signage still was encouraging people to, was still asking people to. But for whatever reason, and you could talk about the audience makeup of this show, that they weren't regular theatre goers, that it was more families or people sort of visiting London on day trips, people were not wearing masks. Like, at all. So let's talk about the actual show. Now the big difference with this revival is traditionally, when Joseph has been cast, it's been Jason Donovan or Philip Schofield, or they've done a whole talent search TV show to find a name actor to play Joseph, to try and build someone up, and he is the star of the show. And the narrator usually comes more traditionally from the musical theatre world. We see this on the tour, where a bunch of X Factor alumni have played Joseph on the tour. Joe McKeldry, Lloyd Daniels, a lot of other alumni from that same Any Dream Will Do TV show. Gareth Gates took over in London. Like, they like pop boy name actors to play Joseph. And it makes a lot of sense for the show. He needs to have a natural charisma. The audience need to fall in love with him. It is not a hugely challenging acting role. It's not a hugely challenging sing. Either you can get away with it with a nice, clean pop vocal. The narrator, on the other hand, very challenging sing. So when this was revived with Sheridan Smith and Jack Yarrow a few years ago at the Palladium, not that Sheridan Smith is not a legit musical theatre actress, she is not the traditional vocalist that would play the role of the narrator. And the keys were adjusted for this. This production also saw an unknown actor, Jack Yarrow, an arts ed graduate, playing the role of Joseph. So they had very much subverted the usual casting of the show where the narrator was now the star and Joseph was an unknown. So beyond the keys being changed and many of the narrator's signature high belt moments being lowered for Sheridan Smith, a lot of the role has also been tweaked and changed so that she gets to show off more comedy shtick. She does things like playing Jacob and putting on a comedy moustache and she plays Potiphar's wife and she gets to multi-role as all these different characters and interact with this group of children on stage. So two years on, Alexandra Burke is playing this role and where I can see a lot of the things they put in would have been very well suited to Sheridan Smith's comedic skill and her ability to sort of win over an audience with her admittedly wonderful charm, Alexandra Burke doesn't necessarily have this in abundance. That's not to say she isn't charming. She's nice and she's engaging and she's got a nice presence. 
but she does not have that same theatrical magic, the twinkle in her eye, and the ability to sell all of the comic moments that I'm sure Sheridan Smith really wowed with. And I could have gotten past this if the keys had gone back up because Alexandra Burke is a phenomenal vocalist, but they didn't. The keys had still been brought down, and what she did sing, I'm really sorry to say, I didn't think she sang particularly well. It was almost as though she was having trouble with some of the fast-paced songs, which confused me because a lot of her pop discography is very fast-paced. She's come off of doing shows like The Bodyguard and Sister Act on tour, and so I don't understand why she would be struggling with the vocals of the narrator, which to my mind is not as big a sing as those other two roles. You could tell she was really working hard to land the comic moments, and she's sort of shuffling around the stage and doing choreography very well, and engaging with the kids, and playing all the different characters, but it just wasn't her bag. It wasn't nearly as well suited to her as you can imagine it having been to Sheridan Smith. Or to Lindsay Hately, who is playing the role at certain performances, reprising her performance as the narrator from decades back opposite Jason Donovan. I really wish I had booked to see Lindsay, because I just imagine from seeing her before on stage, she would have that twinkle, that magic, that ability to sell these magic narrator moments. What really made me cross is at every phenomenal narrator vocal moment, and if you know the show, you know them well, just before that moment, there would be a modulation that would bring it so much lower. The whole Potiphar, letting out a mighty roar, so much lower. The same when that same melody is reprised later in the Pharaoh scene, so much lower. Jacob and Sons was actually in the same place, but the way that she sang Jacob and Sons upset me, because where you want it to be Jacob, Jacob and Sons, it was Jacob, wait, Jacob and Sons, and uh, it just made me unduly cross. And I know that this is something that would only affect me as someone who has a ridiculous attachment to this score because the people I was with around me did not care and I at these moments was just losing my mind. The West End is lousy with talented female vocalists. There are so many ex alphabas who you could have thrown straight into that show. ex alphaba understudies, ex avitas There's so many people who could sing that score phenomenally the way it was written, the way it was meant to sound. I'm sort of surprised that it was allowed to happen, given that Andrew Lloyd Webber is normally such a huge advocate for his scores and his original music being preserved. The whole vibe of the show felt like it was kind of being cheapened for family entertainment. This is the other thing I didn't like about it, because what they've done is they've put a lot more children into the show. Now, children have always been associated with Joseph. Traditionally, they sit on the sides of the stage and they are a chorus that sing along in certain moments of the show. They have this on tour, where they use a lot of local children at various different tour stops. They had it in the West End. But what this production does is give them more staging, so they are around with the narrator at the beginning, and then some of them play Children of Jacob. So, like, three of the brothers are played by children. Potiphar is played by a child. Uh, the baker and the butler are played by children. Children play a much bigger role in this production. Judah is played by a child and sings the start of Benjamin Calypso, only the start, and then a different brother takes over, which is strange. It all felt sort of cheap, and that's not to say that the children aren't phenomenally talented, but the way they got used for laughs was, oh, it was very cringeworthy to me. I really don't like where children are used for laughs with just basic material that would only work because it's a child doing it and people have to applaud. I like where children are given legitimate material in shows like Matilda in the Rodgers and Hammerstein shows. What I don't like is shows like Chitty Chitty Bang Bang where they will bring the children on to do a short reprise of Truly Scrumptious. They just stand there, they sing a few bars again of what they've just sung and then they walk off and the audience applauds again because they're adorable children doing something very basic. It's pandering. It's pandering to the child actors and it's pandering to the audience at the same time. And I don't like to be pandered to. This has become very heated. It's gotten very dark all of a sudden. The weather has like turned dramatic. The theater gods are striking me down. The actual gods are striking me down. If I'm struck by lightning right now, tell my family and Maria Friedman that I love them. I just feel like in previous productions of Joseph, it's a family show where children will love it and they will sing the songs and they will engage with all of that but there's something in it for adults as well. It has those other comic elements and the jokes that will go over children's heads, and it's just broad entertainment that everyone can enjoy without being specifically tailored to kids. At this production, I felt like I was watching an admittedly very, very polished sort of school variety show talent competition. 
Maybe I just don't like kids. Maybe that's really what this is all about. I didn't even like the staging as much. Like, the choreography was very good. It wasn't as good as I've seen in previous productions. I didn't like where it was deployed all of the time. I didn't like that mid Pharaoh story, while Alexandra Burke is singing these amazing high notes, she starts doing the robot in a conga line with children like it's a TikTok video. Let's talk about Jack Yarrow as Joseph. I remember when this revival started, the biggest controversy was I kept reading on theatre forums that he didn't wear a loincloth anymore, and this, this upset people a great amount. I don't personally really care, that doesn't affect me, it doesn't change my life. I do feel it speaks to the way that they've maybe tried to sanitize the show and make it more family friendly for a more just child audience. Jack Yarrow gets the third last bow in this show and he plays Joseph in a show called Joseph. Now the first time he was in this revival he was coming at it as an arts ed graduate who had gotten great reviews for playing Jack Kelly in their production of Newsies. This time, he is coming at it from being Olivier Award nominated in the same role, having great press about him, and yet still, he gets the third last bow. Jason Donovan and Alexandra Burke both bow after him. And that's kind of how Joseph has treated the entire production. The role is very much sidelined in favour of the narrator, which is a very strange choice. I feel like we never really get to know Joseph as a character as well as we would in previous versions, and when he comes back, I'm like, oh yeah, that guy which is bizarre because it's Joseph and he's Joseph. If you want to play a drinking game with this video, take a shot every time I say the word Joseph. Joseph. Now a defining moment of this show is when he sings Close Every Door and Jack Yarrow is great at this. He does a great job. He sings it with this beautiful trembling vibrato. He puts these options in. He has this power and majesty to his voice. In the nicest possible way, I feel like he's almost too good for this song and for this show and he feels a little bit miscast. He's a phenomenal talent, but he should be playing Marius. He should be playing Raoul. He should be doing Sondheim shows with the way that he sings things. Joseph's songs in this score are best sung by a pop voice. Uh, Jason Donovan, Philip Schofield. They are not best sung by someone with rapturous vocal cords. Even Lee Mead sang this song with a considerably straighter tone without the sort of trembling vibrato throughout. Jack Yarrow sings this like it's empty chairs at empty tables and it's moving and it's stirring and it's beautiful but it's too good for this show, honestly. It's almost like he's attached to some sort of graduate scheme where he has to work this show for a set number of years before he's allowed to go off and do the shows that he'd be much better used in. And then they have the audacity to not give him the final bow, which is ridiculous. Then we arrive at Jason Donovan. Now, Jason Donovan only has to enter the stage to get huge applause from the audience, and that's fine. A lot of them are there to see him. I don't begrudge him that, but I don't think he deserves the second to last bow. He doesn't do that much. He doesn't even do as much as the Pharaohs do on the tour because they cut the ridiculous extra Elvis song that they added for the Pharaoh character. His scene at least gives us a scene change, which brings me to another thing I disliked about this production. You're at the London Palladium. The last time I was at this venue, Kelly O'Hara arrived on a ship on the stage. Now you're doing Joseph at the Palladium and the set was so disappointing to me. You had some cloths that went up you had like drapes that came in, you had a chariot that was just on wheels, you had a camel on wheels, and you didn't really have many more set pieces. You had this sort of revolve in the middle that kept going up and down the same amount each time. I want to be wowed. You have the Palladium stage. You can do so much with that. And they didn't. They treated it like it was Butlins. The whole revival felt very much like Butlins to me. No shade to Butlins, honestly. Then there were storytelling moments that got missed for me. Joseph does his whole bit where he's recommending himself to the Pharaoh to be the man to help lead him through the famine. And he says, who this man could be, I just don't know. Which, correct me if I'm wrong, but Pharaoh normally replies to say, Joe. And then they go, da 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 da. In this production, he never said Joe. And maybe that was a mistake the night I saw it, but it was like, who this man could be, I just don't know. Da -da 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 -da. And I was like, are you not going to tell us? You have to tell, you have to say Joe. Otherwise, we don't know. We don't know that it's Joe. You see how I was sat in row B of the dress circle, just starting to lose my mind a little bit at this point. It just feels like the whole thing has been done to cater to a certain amount of celebrity. There's even a section in the Pharaoh song where Alexandra Burke and Jason Donovan get to do a little bit of a Latin ballroom dance section to allude to the fact that they have both been on Strictly Come Dancing, and that is where a majority of the audience may know them from, in addition to their pop music careers and Neighbours and Joseph and The X Factor. It's all about that and not about the show. And this is Joseph. Families will go and see Joseph at the Palladium. Theatres are reopening. People don't have that many choices. Joseph is enough of a name success. And add Jason Donovan into the show. I don't think you need an Alexandra Burke. You don't need 
two celebrities to sell this recognizable name brand show at this recognizable venue. The whole thing boggled my mind a little bit and I got very stressed about it. And then I wrestled with whether or not to actually write a review, to actually make this video. And I acknowledge that I saw it in previews, late previews, but previews nonetheless. But people wanted to know what I thought. And so I thought I would come on here and let you know. Hate is a very strong word. And I acknowledge that this is objectively a solid piece of family entertainment that if I had no emotional attachment to, I would give a three star review. And if you're the kind of person who, when a kid does something really impressive on stage, that's gonna wow you and you're gonna start crying, then you're gonna love this show because that happens like five times. If you're a nostalgic fan of this show and this score, go see it with Lindsay Hately because then at least you're getting that nostalgia value. I assume she sings in the same keys as Alexandra Burke, but I don't know. Go see this show anyway, make up your own mind. My opinions on this are absolutely not universal. I would love to know what you guys think. If you've already seen this show, let me know what you think in the comments section. You can argue with me to your heart's content. You will not change my mind. I am stubborn like that. All of that being said, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure to subscribe to my channel for plenty more stagey content about all of your favorite shows coming very soon. And let me know what video you would like to see next. If you'd like the ability to specifically request a video, head over to patreon.com forward slash Theatre, where some of my membership tiers get that exclusive perk as well. I hope that everyone is staying safe and that you have a stagey day. For 10 more seconds, I'm Mickey Joe Theatre. Oh my god, hey. Thanks for watching, have a stagey day. Subscribe! <laughs>